Attorney General William Barr is now the highest ranking Trump administration official to publicly break with the president on his claims of voter fraud. Barr tells the Associated Press the Department of Justice has not found fraud on a scale that could overturn the election results. For more on this, let's bring in our Chief Justice Correspondent, Pierre Thomas. Pierre, I remember that uh, Attorney General Barr had uh, given permission uh, for uh, U.S. attorneys to look at all claims of voter fraud a little while ago. What was the scale of that investigation? And uh, now that he's gone to the White House, was he called on the carpet about this? Well. Terry, it was a shift in policy, and a lot of my sources were uh, not particularly uh, alarmed by the shift. Uh, there were some Justice Department internal career people who were, because basically what it allowed uh, the prosecutors to do and the FBI to do is to launch, you know, election uh, voter fraud investigations prior to certification. In the past, they had wanted to do it after certification of the presidential race so as not to appear to be uh, affecting the election whatsoever. Um, but if you look at the language that was in uh, the guideline shift, it set a pretty high standard for whether you could launch such an investigation. It couldn't be based on theory. It couldn't be based on consp conspiracies. It had to be based on some actual evidence. And what we've seen is that the Justice Department has uh, been open and available for that evidence, and they haven't found it. And uh, Attorney General Barr was at the White House yesterday. Uh, was President Trump expressing his displeasure at the statement that there was no election fraud? Well, what we can tell you is that um, uh, he was there. Uh, we have not gotten clear guidance on whether he spoke directly uh, with the president uh, about it. Uh, what is unusual, and a number of my sources are talking about, is that the president of the United States has not commented directly, directly about what Barr had to say at all, and it's been more than 24 hours since that story broke. Uh, we have heard from our sources that they do not believe the president was happy about uh, the, the, the uh, statement by Mr. Barr uh, and the timing of it, and uh, we're waiting to see what Mr. Trump has to say directly to Mr. Barr. He has not done it, and you know the president is not bashful, and we wait to see how uh, Mr. Barr would react should the president uh, say something about it. But I can okay. tell you that it, they felt very strongly that um, Barr felt that he should let the people know what the evidence was. And it's, it's devastating for the president. We talked a lot about the real-world implications of what the president's saying is false claims on election fraud, including there have been threats of violence against election officials. We heard the emotional plea from the Secretary of State's office in Georgia. Let's, let's listen again real quick. Stop inspiring people to commit potential acts of violence. Someone's going to get hurt. Someone's going to get shot. Someone's going to get killed. Is law enforcement taking these threats seriously, Pierre? Very seriously. Um, look, at the end of the day, rhetoric, and I've been covering law enforcement a long time, they hate to hear people talk about things like enemies of the state, uh, you know, that, you know, somehow something nefarious was done. Uh, and look at what we've seen in, a, in just in the last several days. You've had uh, the former head of the Homeland Security, Cybersecurity Division, uh, a former U.S. attorney describe him needing to be shot. Uh, you had, in recent weeks, um, a former White House advisor talking about Dr. Anthony Fauci and the FBI director needing to be harmed. Um, the Secretary of State in Arizona uh, has, you know, complained about uh, threats herself. Uh, and we all know about Governor Whitmer uh, and the situation related to COVID-19. Uh, COVID so this is not just talk. And when you have these kind of conversations, law enforcement people will tell you, and they've reminded me over and over, those words wash over the sane and the insane, the good and the evil. Mm. Inflammatory for sure. We're going to switch gears now, and I'll call on your expertise on, on the pardon process. It's the end of a presidential term, and that's one of the big things that happens. ABC News is hearing that President Trump is considering preemptive pardons for members of his inner circle, including his family, maybe even himself. How serious is that possibility? And, and what's the status of the Justice Department's opinion on whether the president can actually pardon himself?
Well, Terry, here's the interesting fact that we know. The president, in the pardons that he's done so far, has largely done them without consulting the Justice Department, uh, breaking uh, kind of the protocols that we've seen in the past, which is not unusual for this president to break protocols. But what we know is that on the Flynn uh, pardon, for example, we were told that the, that the White House did not consult the Justice Department uh, in the final stretches of that uh, pardon and that they learned about it on the day of like we did. And so the question of whether the president could pardon himself or his family, um, a lot of legal scholars uh, have been debating whether that can actually be done. Um, uh, no one has ever you know, really seriously considered doing such a thing without crimes actually being charged against one's family members. Um, so uh, right now I, can, I can't tell you that I've heard anything about the Justice Department actually researching this because, again, on the traditional pardons, the president hasn't really been consulted. Right. Well, they may, we all may learn what the boundaries are there. Pierre Thomas, thanks for that. Pleasure. <laughs> Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.